Hello, beautiful friends. I am Sumati Tata from Quantum Sunrise, and I'm here to speak with you about a few astrological alignments, some really beautiful aspects that are forming. And this full moon is the perfect time to become aware of these. Full moons are excellent times to consider what it is that we've already manifested from the time of the last uh, new moon, which was the 7th of May. And so new things coming to light. And with these really powerful aspects, um, it felt like exactly the right time to share a little bit more about these. We have a mystic rectangle at the time of the full moon with the moon active in this. And we have also got two kites two kites which um, require a trine and two sextiles so one of these trines is a grand air trine and we have another trine as well forming a separate kite so much dynamic energy that is coming up at this time with the full moon that it's um, let's just look at the chart and get into some of what it is that we can see um now what uh so this is the chart for uh the toronto area please ignore the houses this is this is going to change based on where you are in the world so um the ascendant any of the house numbers just ignore all those pieces so let's start with the grand air trine now, we have, in this air trine, we have Sedna, we have Pluto, and the supergalactic center. So, this grand air trine is some really, really big energy. This, although, by all means, check with personal placements, this will bring greater potency possibly to, to this um, trine for you. However, this is very much a collective, a collective experience. The influence that we'll see is much more obviously collective energy because Sedna's orbit is absolutely enormous her orbit is um over twelve thousand years old this also coincides with the cycles that our sun has so that's interesting given all the sun weather that we've had and pluto being the outermost planet is also in a very slow orbit and is in aquarius this is representing the collective and also just electric energy. Um, Sedna is at zero degrees Gemini. She's making an ingress into Gemini. And um, this air sign is, you know, really all about the mind and thinking, how it is that we, we are, the, the collective thinking and our outlook, just what's ingrained in us as our natural way of thinking about things. So these two... Um, planets having this trine aspect to each other are really really compounding this energy of the collective consciousness taking a shift um the supergalactic center is one of the super cosmic supra cosmic points uh which is we can understand it as a black hole that is drawing energy information matter towards it and as I see this trine in these air signs and with these planets and points, this is drawing our attention to this shift in collective energy, collective understandings of how things have been, information about how very basic things in the world work. These are going to be reevaluated. New information may come to light. It may be that we simply come to 
a very different perspective about some of this information. And it may be both. And honestly, it quite likely is. Um, Pluto is the underworld, what's been hidden, what's been kept from us. Also, maybe what has been falsely presented. And so some truth may come to light, new facts and our own discernment in what is truth will become ever more important. Sedna in Gemini is, um, in, in, in the myth of Sedna, she was promised to a husband. She was betrayed by her father when being rescued by this husband who was not treating her well. And this is an Inuit myth. Forgive me, I'm really kind of taking some snippets out of it here. Um, a great storm happened on the sea when she's in the canoe with her father. And to save himself, he threw her overboard and then even cut her fingers, preventing her from being able to cling on to the boat. And in Sedna's surrender, she comes into the whole of herself and this surrender leads to her discovery and um, expression of all of this inner resilience, inner resourcefulness, what we need to nourish us, that we seek outside is actually all within us. And as Sedna fell to the bottom of the sea, sea creatures sprung from her hair, from her limbs, um, and she is very revered as nourishment and look to for calm waters. And there is so much um, feminine wisdom and resourcefulness in her story. There's also some resemblance to the myth of Persephone as she travels to the underworld. And the reason this comes to mind in particular is... Um, Sedna had no sisters that I'm aware of in any of her stories. However, we can see, <coughs> excuse me, that Sedna here is conjunct two of these stars in the Pleiades, Electra, or pardon me, Alcyone and Maya. And I'm very much seeing for the soul, offering compassion, deep, radical compassion to encourage Sedna in coming forward with this resourcefulness. And so we can consider this in our own response to what information may come forward, even if that information it could be really big, right? It may be really big information. It may be something that's very personal to you. So either way that this hits, we're encouraged to feel compassion for ourselves, recognize our own resourcefulness and our powers of transmutation. We hold this within our abilities deep within our soul, this is something we are capable of doing. And with the trine energy, this flow is moving. If we choose to engage with it, then, then we can become a willing participant and have a greater effect on how it is that we experience this. But with the super galactic center drawing this energy, pulling this energy of the trine through from Pluto, almost seems to be like moving outward, outward farther from our earth out into the universe and pulling this information through towards us and beyond. So that is the grand air trine. We also have this kite forming here which involves Neptune at 29 degrees of Pisces. 
at 29 degrees of Pisces, we also have a star in Pegasus called Shayat. I'm sure this is pronounced a lot of different ways. <clears throat> but the conjunction with this star also suggests to me some greater discernment coming in, particularly with Neptune at 29 degrees. This is the anoretic degree. This brings intensity. Neptune and Pisces could be um, something that's illusory and something we maybe don't understand or something that we are maybe fabricating because it feels more comfortable. We could be kind of gaslighting ourselves. Something might feel better and we're just going to choose to go with it that way. Um, there's potential for this. But it's very much about a choice point, because with this kite, we have an opposition to the supergalactic center. So if we choose to continue to think small and keep things um, in a smaller frame, then it may be easier to lose ourselves in some kind of veil of illusion, get floated away in the Piscean waters of our imagination into something that isn't real. So Shayat is bringing us energies of greater discernment. Like you've seen this before. It's time to really don't let this sideswipe you. Don't let this take you off course. Don't let this be something bigger than it is. And also don't ignore it. The potential is there depending on how we engage with it. And if we do so, consciously and actively, then we can, in effect, steer this kite energetically for us in our experience. And it also makes this very big, universal, collective energy and experience of the trine. It brings the more personal aspect. Being within our solar system, Neptune brings us a more personal experience here. So within the greater context of the trine, that kite brings it home, makes it personal. How will we choose to engage with this? Um, we could be idealistic, and that isn't a bad thing, but making sure that we ground this energy within ourselves. The water here can be our waters in our body with Venus and Jupiter in Taurus and very much encourage us to ground this energy in, do something joyful and creative that allows us to, to exercise this energy from us. Doing something productive that may shift some of what our imagination is moving from, maybe bringing something into reality that we've wanted to to really create something so there's beautiful potential here with this grand air trine big ideas big information and our personal experience of it being discerning recognizing this as something that we've dealt with before if we receive some news that is jarring we're looking at with pluto and aquarius there's been a lot of information shared about that already this is bringing us a paradigm shift and we're being introduced to it. And so if what comes up in this period may be shocking, let's flow with it. Um, now, this trine in particular, the Grand Air Trine, is a very long-term um, aspect. So just keep that in mind. This isn't something that we're transiting through quickly. This will be with us for um, the next... Um, I believe it's about two years that we will see this trine stay in place. Now, the other kite that we have is involving the moon herself at Sagittarius. And the moon is the fulcrum, the steering point for this kite. The sextiles are to the supergalactic center again, and to Pluto. So it's all the same energies that are being engaged and in different ways being made personal. Now, the moon is an extremely personal representation of our feelings, our emotions. Um, it's a very feminine energy. 
It reflects back to us and in a full moon literally reflects back to us the light of the sun and reflects back to us the energy and the emotions of the collective, of the greater collective. And again, we, our own feelings come into this, our own feelings. How do we feel about our own intentions? So this is really the big personal potential here. And it is in opposition to the sun at two degrees Gemini, which is in conjunction with Sedna, as well as Alcyone and Maya in the Pleiades. So this combination of energies that I've already mentioned a little bit about, this trine now, including the opposition to the moon, the moon is reflecting back to us. How is it that we, in this depth of, of what may be something absolutely dismantling to our understanding of the status quo of our paradigm of reality what if there is something completely altering that paradigm as we know it and that may be the information that comes to light it may be our experience really we don't know what this could be this is unknown is one of the things that we can probably count on with this energy but whatever it is, if we allow how we're feeling to be reflected upon, but instead of wallowing in it, if it's a feeling of contracted energy and something difficult, instead of succumbing to that energy and feeling woe is me and, you know, identifying with the idea of being a victim of what it is that's happening, circumstances that are coming about, if instead we allow ourselves to surrender to the greater forces that are outside of our control, we can receive this compassion, this love and assistance, support from the Pleiades. Two of the seven sisters are conjunct exact to the degree Sedna, who is a symbol of this divine feminine resourcefulness deep within our souls, an emotional, emotional ability to not overcome in the way that we power through to be moved beyond something, but rather to surrender into the depths of the emotions that we feel, to experience them, and then to move through them, to allow them to give birth to something greater, to something better, to something more beautiful and positive, something that nourishes us. And so I hope that this information has been useful for you. I hope you found something that um, helps you in some way. By all means, check your own personal placements. There's so much happening in this, in this chart. Um, I didn't speak about the rectangle. Let's go to the rectangle. The mystic rectangle is here, made up of two trines, two sextiles, and two oppositions. The oppositions are the ones we've already spoken about that I've mentioned. Jupiter, Neptune is opposite the supergalactic center. The moon is opposite the sun, Sedna, Alcyone, and Maya in the Pleiades. The sextile is between those stars, the sun and Sedna, and Neptune. There's also a sextile between the supergalactic center and the moon. And then the trines here on opposing sides. So um, Neptune and Shayat are also trining the moon. Now, the trines don't require our engagement to be active, moving energy. The sextiles, however, do. They're very ready. It's, it's, it's a cooperative energy between the two bodies engaged there, but they require us to in some way activate this. So in this mystic rectangle, which is a very, very dynamic um, 
formation in a chart. There's there's dynamism, there's movement to this. Um, and my sense is that this begins with the moon in this case, that, that how it is that we choose to engage and to experience this energy is up to us. This trine will move along to Neptune. We will feel very deeply. There may be something really otherworldly about where our thoughts take us, where our emotions take us, perhaps the ideas that are brought about. So many different things available to happen, but how we feel about it and then our imagination moving into this and potentially being carried away, getting creative, finding new ideas, and again, finding whether we're choosing to um oppose this pull of energy if we find it frightening we might draw back and try to put the brakes on but that will only make an experience that is by its nature dynamic such as this aspect more difficult for us to move through so this sextile how do we engage with this we can we can engage with compassion we engage with compassion anything that might feel disturbing to us allow ourselves that grace feel compassion for ourselves in our disturbance. This will give us a smoother experience of this as we move along. And again, there's a trine back down to the supergalactic center. This is information calling to us from just beyond anything we can fathom. This is greater than our Milky Way, greater than our individual galaxy. These are all being pulled to greater and greater points. And so choose love in your everyday encounters in your everyday dialogue with yourself in how it is that we meet new information especially if it's shocking and really um, throws us off our balanced footing allowing ourselves to really witness how it is that new events and new information meet us on our path and allowing ourselves to choose to have a more positive experience of moving through any of the energies that come our way. Venus conjunct Jupiter in Taurus are really asking us to find something joyful in our lives and experience that, something in the material world. And this can also be something that we decide to make more manifest about our spiritual life. Maybe we decide we want to anchor that into something in our daily habits. Um, so lots of opportunities to present to us in this full moon is a great time to choose how it is we're going to engage. Um, feeling all of this personal energy, feeling what ends up being a balance of all the elements, the moon in a fire sign, Neptune in a water sign, Venus and Jupiter in an earth sign, and then the trine of the supergalactic center and Pluto and Sedna being in air signs. There's a lot of air here. We can really benefit from grounding this in. Um, we are bodies made of water and stardust. We ground this into the earth in some material action we can have a much more smooth experience of these very, very intense energies that are flowing to us and through us. I thank you for your engagement. I thank you for watching. If you're interested in receiving your own personal natal galactic chart reading, please contact me at quantumsunrise.ca. Thank you. Thank uh you. -huh.